Hey everybody, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I'm back with a new layout and video for Hip Kit Club and I'm using the 2019 October kits. And I'm gonna be making a Halloween slash fall themed page. And so I went through the cardstock kit and all of the pattern papers and picked out things that had purple, pink, orange, and black on them. And I'm gonna use some of them, not all of them. And I'm going to use this cut file that's one of the exclusives for this month. I went ahead and cut it. And then I'm going to use this picture to scrap. It's my cute daughter from a few years ago in her little pumpkin shirt. And I picked out some things that I want to coordinate onto the page at some point. Lots of leaves and die cuts and pocket life card. Basically just things that match the color scheme. Uh, tons of leaves. Uh, and very, very pretty fall slash Halloween type of embellishments this month. So I'm going to start with this beautiful purple cardstock. It's in the cardstock kit, and I just think this color of purple is so, so pretty. It's perfect for Halloween and fall. So now the cut file that you saw is pretty much going to go in the center of my background, and I want to do some mixed media on the background that's going to show between all of the little spider web pieces of the cut file and then around the edges of everything. And so I'm going to use white gesso to do that. And I'm just using my palette knife to scrape it down. And then I'm going to use my fingers to smudge around the edges because I don't want any harsh scrape lines where my gesso dries. I want it to be kind of cloudy and hazy. So I'm going to scrape some and then smudge some and now it's all dry. You can kind of see there what I was talking about with the whole hazy thing. So now that that's completely dry, I'm going to start to use all three of the Lindy's Starburst sprays that we get in the color kit this month. They are gorgeous, very bold. We get a purple color, a pink color, and a golden yellow color. And they all mix together really, really pretty. <clears throat> And I'm starting here with the purple color. That one is called Sweet Violet Purple Teal. And then the pink color here, it looks kind of red when you first spray it, but when it dries, it is definitely pink. And it's called Bougainvillea Fuchsia. And these two colors mix really, really well together. And if you want to get some orange, you can mix in the yellow color, which is called Grab a Guy Gold. You can mix that with the pink one and you'll get a pretty orange tone. So I'm going to kind of mix all three of these colors together here in the beginning and just I'm using water. I'm using my brush to kind of spread the color around. And when you do add water to these sprays, it does dilute the shimmer factor a little bit. But I mean, that's OK. Um, I'm mainly going for color here. So uh, I'm going to just keep working on it. I want there to be some purple areas. I want there to be some pink areas. And I wasn't really going for anything yellow. So when I add the yellow spray in, I'm going to be mixing it to create more of an orangey shade. And <clears throat> excuse me, this background actually takes me quite a while to make. And I'm going to kind of talk you through what happens here as I go. And you can see how bold these colors are. Um, I'm just going to kind of tilt the paper around, let the colors sort of blend and spread together. And I love watching this happen. I think it's so fun. It's mesmerizing to just watch the color kind of bleed around the page there. And I want to keep it on top of where the gesso is because the gesso is protecting the paper. Okay, so look at this. When it dried, it was, it almost disappeared. It's completely nothing like the color when it first comes out of the bottle. I don't know if it's because I'm adding water to it or if it's the way it reacts with gesso, but I'm finding that the more I use the Lindy's, the more they definitely dry way lighter than you think they're going to. You can see how dark and bold it is here. And when it dries, it is super light. Now, I think that if you spray these colors directly onto the paper, don't add water, don't add gesso, you're going to get more of a true color. But I love to blend the colors and I like to, you know, mix and match the colors. And in order for that to happen, I need to use gesso. And so I, um, I've experienced this with this, with the powders also in, um, yeah, it just depends on, on what you're going for. And the more I add to it, 
the darker things get as I go. But I just wanted to kind of show you here the layering aspect of these colors. Um, I'm going to come in with my heat tool here and I'm just going to kind of turn the paper different ways and kind of dry it as it runs. Um, and I really like this effect. It looks really cool when you use your heat tool like this. You could also just let it air dry. Uh, I did that on the first go round. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm just going to keep turning the page here. You can kind of see how it's looking. And then it was a it's almost dry, not completely dry, but you can see here how it is drying a lot lighter. However, I love the effect. I still really like how it looks when it's dry. Um, and it just, it's going, it's going to depend on the color that you want. And you can see there in the middle, do you see that blue? That is from the purple spray. The purple spray has this shimmery blue powder in it. And so you get the purple color, but the shimmer is blue. It is so pretty. It is really magical to watch it dry. So I'm just, I, I let that phase dry or that layer dry, and I'm going to come back in with more colors and do it again. Um, <clears throat> I try to not add as much water on this layer. Um, I do kind of use my brush to spread it around because I don't want it to look streaky. Uh, I, I still want it to look blended, um, but I do like the effect of it when it's dry. And you can see here, it's <laughs> it's still a lot lighter. I did add some more purple and play with it off camera, but um, you can see the blue shimmer there. And I really like how this is looking. It's just, I want more of the pink. I want more of that bright pink color. And then my nozzle started leaking, so I had to put a napkin over it when I started to, to spray there. Okay, so here's the next layer. This time I decided to spray it down and then just kind of leave it and not dilute it with water and kind of just use my paper towel to kind of roll the, roll the edges around. Just use a little bit of a napkin to dab it up a little bit. And it's getting more of the color that I want and still wet, not completely dry, but it's looking darker and I'm liking how this is looking. But yeah, there's no way you would want to add this much liquid to the cardstock without using gesso. The gesso is what is helping this paper to not rip and tear because of all this wet stuff I'm putting on it. So I'm going to let that dry and I want the boo and the the uh, spider web to stand off the page a little bit more. So to do that I'm going to take some white acrylic paint and my little brush here and I'm just going to paint some messy white edges uh, around the boo and around all the the pieces of the uh, spider web there and this white edge is just going to make it stand out a little bit more and this is just plain white acrylic paint okay here we go again i let it dry and look how light it's almost like it's disappearing it doesn't want to stay its true color and again i don't know if it's the gesso or if it's the water i don't know it just <laughs> look at my hands they are so filthy that is why my glue bottle stays dirty because you see my hands my hands get that way and then I grab the glue and yeah that's why it looks that way but I'm okay with it so I decided to finally just go to my gelatos here and smudge in some of the pink I, I absolutely love how this background looks I love the marbled look of it I like the lights and the darks I just wanted some more of that deep pink color so instead of adding liquid again because uh, I had already spent a ton of time on this background. I mean, we're already eight minutes into this video, nine minutes into this video, and it's sped up, and we're still working on the background here. So I just kind of said, okay, let's use some gelatos, and I just smudged it down, smudged it around with my finger, and then that is kind of what I was going for. I wanted some pops of that bright fuchsia color pink. And I think it looks really pretty mixed with the background. I, uh, I do love how it turned out. And it's always an experiment, you know? I never really know how things are going to react with water or react with gesso. It's, you just kind of have to play with it and see how it goes. And, you know, I think if this were, like I said before, if this were a plain white background with uh, no gesso, it's probably going to look more true to color. So I'm really loving how this is looking. I'm loving those pops of that hot pink. And that's that's the look that I was going for. And I love how it looks with the purple. I love how it looks with the orange in the shirt. 
So yeah, this background turned out really cool. I mean, you saw how many layers of color I had to put on this, but I think it turned out really cool. And I am going to come back in with the sprays for some splatters of the purple. And you'll be able to see these kind of around the edges of everything. And yeah, it's a cool background. I love how it turned out. You know, every background's always different. And it is just, this is why I enjoy making backgrounds. You just never know what you're going to get until it's done. I do want to add some white splatters. So all I'm doing here is watering down some cheap white acrylic paint. Nothing fancy. Just add a little bit of water to it. And I love how this is going to turn out. Actually, some of these white dots are going to turn pink because my background isn't completely dry 100%. And they kind of uh, mixed with the gelato there. And I love how that turned out. So cool. I love white splatters on top of darker backgrounds. It's just awesome. All right, so I want to raise the cut file up off the page. So I'm going to cut some strips of adhesive foam to cover the back of it. And so when it's glued down, it's going to kind of pop off the page a little bit. And then I'm going to start to add several layers behind my picture. I'm going to start with some tissue paper here. And I'm going to go back to all those pattern papers and add some pink. I'm going to add some orange and then some of that dark fuchsia purple-ish color and just sort of have each of these colors sort of peeking around the edges of the picture. Um, the design of this layout actually came together pretty quickly once I decided on this cut file because as you can see, you know, it's, it's pretty good to go right in the middle of your design and then there's the perfect area to the left of it for your picture. So I thought, you know, it just kind of creates your design for you. And so in order to add more color, I'm going to go with all these pattern papers as just layers behind the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all those down and I'm going to use my little edge distressor there on some of them to, you know, kind of ruffle up and distress the edges. And then I'm going to go through some of the die cuts. A lot of these, um, actually all of these die cuts here are exclusive to hip kits this month. There are a ton of exclusive papers, embellishments, all the pocket life cards are exclusive as always. And I just kind of went through everything and picked out a lot of the leaves. There are vellum leaves, there are acetate leaves, there are die cut leaves. I'm going to cut this leaf from this pocket life card. Basically anything that matched my color scheme. And uh, I'm going to cut up this die cut here just to get the flowers. This is a Paige Evans paper. It's again the perfect color scheme. So I'm going to wind up fussy cutting several different leaves from that paper. And then I'm going to use a punch. This is one of my very old Martha Stewart little leaf punches there. And I decided that I wanted to add in light blue, which is totally not a Halloween color. But something about it just sort of, I don't know. I looked at it and I love all these oranges and pinks and purples and blacks. But I wanted to kind of add something a little bit lighter. So I thought, ooh, light blue would be pretty. So I punched some um, from a pattern paper some little bitty leaf sprigs there because there were no leaves in that color. So I made them myself and then I'm going to come in with some more pops of light blue by using tangled thread. And so that's what I'm doing there. I'm going to tuck some in to the left of the photo, kind of underneath the photo where the B is in boo. You can kind of see it underneath or in the, in the holes of the B. And then I'm going to do another little flower cluster to the right of my daughter's head on the photo and then over on the the uh, second O. And in the end, the word boo is going to not be 100% visible. Um, the second O kind of disappears behind flowers, but I'm okay with it. Uh, I really wasn't going for, you know, I didn't feel like I had to have the word boo on here. You can still make it out, but, you know, right away when you look at it, you may have to study it for a second. You can kind of see there what I'm talking about. I added some flowers, but I just kept adding because everything was matching and I thought, oh, this looks good. This looks good. Stick it down, glue it down. And that's what I'm doing here is gluing it all down. Um, I fussy cut more flowers from pattern paper. Uh, there's lots of fussy cutting opportunities this month with flowers and leaves in the, in, uh, the Paige Evans Truly Grateful papers. And they match so well. So, so pretty. Um, I'm going to very carefully start to glue down the spider web here. And then I'm going to add in some more leaves. I used this same leaf stamp last week and I had stamped some in a pink color on this 
packaging from some of the stickers. And so I went ahead and did this off camera um, because I'd already done it last week, um, but I used a blue Distress ink. And I thought this would be a good chance to add in some more pops of blue by just stamping my own leaves. So I stamped them and then just cut those out. And that stamp set is also exclusive for this month. And I am obsessed with that leaf. I think it's the perfect leaf. It's the perfect size. It's uh, It stamps really clear. It's easy to cut out. Yes, it's perfect. So I had, I had some pink ones left over from my last week's layout. So I used some of those and then some blue ones. And then I wanted some blue kind of around the photo. So I just tore a little bit of this Pocket Life card to add to it. And I did try to use my Martha Stewart leaf punch on that Pocket Life card, but it was just too thick. And my uh, punch is just too old. It got stuck and I had to operate on it. So I didn't try that again. But you can kind of see what I've got here at this point. I love how this is looking. I love all the dimension. Leaves and flowers are awesome for dimension because you can kind of fold up the petals and fold up the edges of the leaves to just sort of uh, jump off the page. All right, so I'm gonna go with this sticker Halloween. That's gonna be my title. It's the perfect size. I love that it's orange, it matches, and it looks really good right underneath the boo that you can't really tell says boo anymore, but hey, it's okay. Um, I wanted to add some blue splatters. So I went back to my white acrylic paint and then some of the other blue powder that we've gotten in past kits, watered it down, splatters, perfect. That's an, another way to use the Lindy's powders that we've gotten in previous kits. Just add them to some paint, glue, or, uh, dilute it, splatter it down. Easy, easy. So I decided to do a little bit of something at the top of the layout and the bottom of the layout. I didn't want it to leave it just, just uh, plain purple. So I thought about cutting strips like I just did there, distressing them, and then just adding them to the top and the bottom, but I didn't like the way that looked. It just kind of cut off the top and the bottom. I don't know, I didn't like it. So I decided to just kind of, I almost didn't, I hesitated, but I finally do. I just cut like a little crooked, little bit of a sliver off the top and then glue, well not glue, tape down this orange piece here. And so you kind of see this little sliver of orange at the top. And I like how that looks. I'm gonna go back and distress the edges again to make it, you know, more, um, textured and interesting and then I'm gonna do the same thing down at the bottom so it's got a little bit of orange at the top and the bottom and then off camera I did some stitching I used light blue thread I did some zigzag close together some zigzag spaced out and a little bit of straight stitching just to give a little pop of blue at the top and the bottom and then the last thing I'm gonna do is come in with my journaling I'm gonna use my t-square ruler there to draw in some lines and then since I do have black going on in here, I'm gonna use my black fine tip Sharpie to add my journaling. And then I add the date off camera, but that's the final layout. Um, it's hard to photograph this. Yesterday was a weird lighting day. So hopefully you can see all the details there. Um, I really love how this turned out. Even though my background was a struggle, it took me a, a long time to get it like I like it, but I think it turned out really pretty. Uh, I love all these colors together and all of the fun details and textures and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the kits or the techniques or the products, anything at all. I'll be more than happy to uh, answer you. There you can see the blue splatters there. Those were easy to do. Just mix in the powder. But yeah, anyway, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.